after 285,000 miles, the heat from the engine has pretty much disintegrated this noise shield on the bottom of this intake manifold. <coughs> And what I did right there, I've got the manifold upside down and I just took out that little push type uh, grommet and now I'm just trying to separate that uh, noise shield from the manifold there. It's kind of like in two halves. As you can see that insulation was falling down right there, what's left of it that didn't get blown away in the wind. Right. What I'm working on now is uh, removing the eight bolts that hold the lower intake manifold on. Uh, I'm going to replace that gasket in there just because the manifold is off. Uh, but the only way to replace it is to pull the manifold off. So I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and take care of that. Now you probably don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's, it's probably not a big deal. It's just my, my thing to do here. This comes off pretty easy there, just grab it and pull it off. You can see how dirty that is and all the sludge build up down inside of there over the years. This manifold just comes right off. Then that lower intake is uh, plastic, whereas the upper is aluminum on my engine. You may have an all plastic uh, manifold. Alright, what I'm doing here now is pulling off the fuel rail. There is uh, two bolts on each side. Just grab that fuel rail there and just pull up on it and the uh, fuel injectors will come out of the manifold, at least most of them will. There may have one or two that's still stuck in the uh, in the manifold, but most of them will come up with a fuel rail. See, I still got some gas in there. So just go ahead and pull those injectors out. And uh, now that I've got that all tore down there, I'm just taking this out and blowing it out with some uh, compressed air. and. Uh, don't be a dummy like me. Go ahead and put some safety glasses on anytime you work around compressed air. blowing down inside the uh, individual runners. Try to blow some of that insulation out that will fill down in there. Now 
now I've got the lower intake manifold. I'm going to do the same thing. See, there's quite a bit of uh, gunk build up there around that tuning valve on the front. That's where my leak was. Just kind of running down right through there and all the dust and everything collecting, making a nice little mess. I've got some alcohol and I'm just uh, wiping off the bottom of this, actually the top of the uh, lower intake manifold, the gasket surface there. It's not too bad, pretty easy to clean off. There's quite a bit of gunk build up on the upper intake manifold also there in the front where that leak was. So I'm just wiping that down. Uh, not perfectly, but just getting the, the majority of it off. I would pressure wash it if my pressure washer was working, but it's down. Now this uh, new gasket came in with bushings that are installed in the eyelets of that uh, gasket there and uh, that doesn't work with the grommet with the uh, little bushings that are already installed into the manifold so what I have to do is pop those bushings out with a little pair of needle nose and there is a couple of little uh, pin type uh, push-in type deals on the on that gasket that will allow you to push it down into the manifold so it doesn't come off. So I'm going to go ahead and place that down onto the manifold now. It fits on there nicely and push those little pins in and it won't come off and you can go ahead and install that onto the upper intake manifold. Just make sure you orient it right. I don't know if it'll fit backwards or not. Probably not. But uh, install a couple of bolts up through the bottom there just to hold it on so you can flip it over and then finish it up from the top side. And I'm just going to get all the bolts snug. There's eight total bolts. Now this is the first stage here and this is uh, 18 inch pounds on the first one. And I am following a pattern Now this is the second stage here and it's at 89 inch pounds. What I've got there is just a nylon engine cleaning brush and some alcohol and I'm going through each one of the fuel injector holes and cleaning those out.
I'm putting some clean engine oil around the O-rings on these fuel injectors that'll help it uh, install in there better and then just line everything up with the manifold there and just push down on it and it should pop in. Do that on both sides. Now for the two bolts on each side, these are going to be torqued to uh, 89 inch pounds. It's amazing what a gasket and water would do to aluminum. That's actually pitted right there, and that's probably where the leak was coming from. So I've got one there, and I've got pretty much the same thing going on over here on this side. All right, I'm taking these old gaskets off of the heads here. Just uh, be careful and look around. Make sure, see that rock right there? Uh, make sure nothing falls down inside of that head. And that could uh, definitely damage your uh, valves or piston. And just to prevent anything from going down in there, while I'm cleaning this, I'm sticking some uh, paper towels down in each intake uh, runner. And then I'm also going to put some in the water passages too. As you see that's part of that noise shield there that uh, crumbled up when I pulled the manifold out. Okay, what I've got here is uh, called a Whiz disc. It's made by 3M, and uh, it's a roll-off type of disc that you that can be installed with a little uh, adapter there for a drill. And uh, I just went through there and cleaned up that surface with that. Made a pretty easy job of it. Now I'm just going over with a Scotch uh, Bright Pad 600 grit. This really cleans it up very nicely. And I'm uh, shoving a rag down in here, make sure I don't get anything in there. This whiz disc does have some abrasive that uh, abrasives that come off as you're using it. So I don't want any of that going down inside the intake manifold there. And the same thing here. I'm using this Scotch Bright pad to polish that up real good it's not going to hurt the surface uh, one thing don't use anything that's going to scratch the aluminum on this manifold or on the head or you could create a, a leak passageway so here I am on the head this is around that uh, that water passage there was pretty pretty nasty and as you can see the coolant that it went down into the uh, spark plug hole there blowing that out with some compressed air make sure you got your eye protection on if you're using compressed air same thing with the whiz disc just get all of that stuff out of there go through each hole and blow it out get it as clean as you can and of course you know that is what's causing the misfire is that coolant going down in there and shorten out that coil so path doesn't go through to the spark plug so it just shorts out to the block or the head and I'm wiping out this gunk out of the valley of the block there. there's quite a bit of buildup in there 
just going to get as much of that out as I can. And a vacuum certainly helps here. And as well as the uh, coolant there towards the front, it's still wet. Quite a nice puddle down there. Now I'm using this vacuum here to vacuum out around the paper towels to uh, suck out any kind of abrasive that may be laying down in there. I'm just taking my time right here and uh, going around each intake runner and the water passageways. And just a little makeshift tube that I made up for the vacuum cleaner there with some duct tape and a piece of uh, 3 8 inch spinal hose that let me get down in there and get some of that uh, crud out of uh, the intake runners. So that makes a real easy job there of uh, sticking that down inside of there. There was some uh, pieces of that noise shield that fell down in there. And it's made a pretty pretty easy job of sucking that stuff up. And of course some of the insulation went down in there too, so I'm hitting the spark plug holes also. Now I've got some carburetor cleaner. I'm just gonna spray this down right here and wipe it down real good to get any kind of uh oily residue off of it because I am going to be putting some Permatex on here around those water passageways we don't want that to uh, not set up on there good so. just make sure you take your time with, with all of this right here and get it nice and clean I'm using carburetor cleaner because that's what I have. Some people use brake cleaner. If you got that, that'll be fine just as long as it removes the uh, oily residue. And like a degreaser. And it evaporates. Same thing on this intake manifold. As you can see, that whiz disc and that uh, Scotch Bright pad there does a really good job of cleaning this mating surface up. <laughs> 